Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and this is Mr. Moon, the noisy guy you can always hear in my videos. And today we're gonna paint this little autumn tree painting. Now this video is sponsored by our friends over at Liquitex, who generously sent me these tubes of paint that we're gonna test out today. I have cadmium red medium and cadmium yellow medium, two of each color. And one of them is the cadmium paint, and one of them is their new cadmium free paint, which is different from the cadmium hue paint. So their cadmium free paints are supposed to be exactly like the cadmium based paints in opacity, saturation, color, texture, everything. The only difference being that they don't have the toxic cadmium chemical in them. So I thought that it would be fun to test that out in today's video. So I'm actually gonna create two of the same painting to see if I can tell the difference between the paints. Now, like I said, I have no idea which paint is which. So while I paint with them, I will see what kind of differences I might notice and make a guess as to which paint I think is which. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna open this envelope they sent that says which paint was the cadmium paint and which one was the cadmium free. So make sure you watch to the end to see that. Now before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and then check out the video description below for a full list of materials for today's painting. Now let's get started. So Liquitex was so generous as to send me these paints. Some of you may have seen that they have cadmium red paint and they have cadmium free paint and cadmium hue paint and I've asked what the difference is. The difference is that the cadmium free paints are supposed to have the exact same color and opacity and all of the properties of the cadmium based paints but without the toxic cadmium in them. So I have red medium and yellow medium and I know this month I've been using cadmium yellow light so you can use cadmium yellow light if you don't have medium in place of it for this painting. So these tubes aren't labeled. They just say A and B. So I have no idea which one of these is the cadmium based paint and which one is the cadmium free. So what I'm gonna do is create the same painting on two different canvases. And I won't make you watch me create two of the exact same painting. I might show you a little bit of the second painting but in super fast time lapse. So don't worry about that. We'll just focus on doing one painting. But I'm gonna do the exact same painting and try to see if there's any differences in these paints. So on my canvases here, I've labeled them A and B as well. So I'll be using that red and that yellow on that canvas, and this red and this yellow on this canvas. I also have two different palettes also labeled A and B for the same reason. Now first what I'm gonna do is give this a very dark purple underpainting because I feel like that would be a really nice contrast to our bright red tree when it pokes out of the edges just a little bit. And to make that purple, I'm gonna use ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And a little bit of titanium white, just so it's not too dark. I want you to be able to tell it's purple. A Little bit of matte medium, and to do this quick, I'm gonna use my paper towel. You don't have to use a paper towel if you don't want to. So I'm gonna grab some blue and some red and a bit of white and my matte medium, and I'm just gonna scrub it on here. Remember, it doesn't really matter what this looks like. You're not gonna see it. You'll just see hints of this color poking out around the edge of the trees. I want it a little darker than that, so I'm just gonna grab some more red and blue. That's better. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other canvas while this one dries, but I won't make you watch me do that. All right, our underpainting is dry, and I just have this piece of chalk. And whenever I use chalk, I get a lot of questions about what kind of chalk I use. This is just a chunk of sidewalk chalk. It is nothing fancy, just chalk. And I'm gonna take it and just start sketching out my elements. So I know I kinda of want a little bit of a hill, generally in that area, and the trunk of a tree, right about there. And then I'm just gonna kinda scribble out 
about where I want the foliage on my tree to be. Notice I'm not trying to draw anything specific. This is just chalk so none of it is set in stone. If I decide I want to take something out farther somewhere, I will. Or if I want to bring something in tighter, I can do that too. Now the first thing I want to do to get started painting is paint in the darker color of my tree. So to do that, I'm going to use some phthalo blue. I don't need a whole lot of phthalo blue for this part. You know what, I'm going to lay it out on my B palette as well. What I'm looking for when I'm testing out these paints is how they mix with other colors. Make sure that I get the same color mixing A or B with this color. Make sure that the opacity is the same, all of those things. So for that underpainting, I'm going to use the phthalo blue with red medium and red medium from the B tube here. Now just looking at those two paints, I don't see a difference, including in the texture. In the cadmium hue and the cadmium base paint, the texture is quite different as well as the color. So, so far they look exactly the same. All right, I'm going to take my number eight filbert. I'm going to take a bit of phthalo blue. Remember that phthalo blue is super strong. See how it just already took over that red. I'm going to mix enough red into it that it just looks like a very dark red. I don't want the chromatic black that I can get from mixing those two colors. I still want it to be obviously red. Maybe just a little bit redder than that. That's pretty good. I'm going to grab just a hint of matte medium and mix it in there just so it spreads nice and smooth. I'm going to come in here to my tree and I'm just loosely kind of scribbling it on there like that. See, I'm not brush stroking, I'm not back and forth. And I'm going to leave some blank spots. Take it up off the edge of your canvas in places though. Don't make it squished so that it doesn't touch any of the edges. See how I'm leaving some of that underpainting showing? Not all of that is going to keep showing. You know, once we add the other colors, it may be blocked out a little bit. But you can make that determination as you go. And once we start painting the sky, if you have some spots that you think are too big that you left open, just don't put your sky in there. And it will just appear to be a, maybe a deeper part in the tree, another shadow color. I'm not drawing leaves, I'm not being terribly specific, I'm just kind of scrubbing it on there. Let's put a little bit of that color in the ground as well, just to say some leaves have maybe fallen. So I'm going to use my brush on the side and I'm just going to kind of dash it. If any of this is too much when we start doing the grass, you can just paint over it. So don't be afraid to really get crazy and put quite a bit in there. Now I'm just gonna take a paper towel and wipe my brush off. I don't wanna completely get rid of that dark color on my brush, because it'll help me with the next part. But I don't want clumps of it either. Now I'm gonna come into the red and pretty much just pick up red. And can you see how I picked that up? I kind of scooped it up like a spoon on the end of my brush. So it's kind of globbed on there. So go into your paint and just kind of scoop. Come into where you want some foliage and I have my brush on the side. You see that? It's not flat like that. It's on the edge, so I'm using the edge of the brush. Onto the side and kind of just wiggle it in like that. Now everybody's brush stroke like that is gonna look totally different. Everybody understands that information differently Everybody's hand works differently. So if you're doing this and it doesn't look like mine, that is okay, don't stress that. I'm kind of scribbling and I'll flip it on the flat side, maybe to the other side. I'm being pretty random with it and I'm using very light pressure. With this amount of paint, you don't have to use a lot of pressure to apply it. Now, I can tell you right now so I've been using the cadmium red medium in the heavy body, and I've been using the cadmium base paint, not the cadmium hue. 
if this is the cadmium free paint, it's exactly like the cadmium paint. I'm not noticing any difference in the texture, consistency, color, none of that. Notice how much of that dark underpainting I'm allowing to show. Quite a bit of it. Make sure you do this before that underpainting dries because that's going to help these colors keep from seeming too separate. If they seem too separate, it's going to look really placed. And that's another reason that I left a little bit of that dark color on my brush because it is kind of helping blend it a bit at the bottom. And that's really about it. Super, super simple. Maybe I'll just add a little bit more in the bottom part of the tree here, but I feel like the top is pretty good. So we're almost getting a little bit of an impasto look here. Some of this paint is quite thick. Remember, impasto is when your paint has texture to it, when it's applied so heavily that there's some texture there. Okay, I think that's good. Now I'm gonna go to my number four filbert. It's the same brush I just used, it's just much smaller. And I'm gonna get some of the yellow medium in the A tube. All right, I'm gonna grab a good blob of my red because I still wanna use it kind of in pasto like we did there. I'm gonna set it down there by my yellow and just drag a little bit of yellow in. I'm not looking for a dramatically different orange just a little bit of an orange. Hold it up to your red paint to kind of test it. Let's go just a little more than that. And again, kind of scoop it up. Can you see how heavily loaded my brush is? And we're gonna come in, and I'm kind of gonna use my brush the same, but for the most part, it's just gonna be kind of a tap. See that, I'm just kind of tapping to create a look like a leaf and because that red is still wet and super thick it's helping to kind of break the transition between them so I'm not getting you know blobs of this orange just kind of setting on top of the red it's blending in just a little bit I'm kind of working toward the outer edge see that where it's faded I'm letting that seem like the inside of the tree but where I've got these hard edges like right here kind of go into the outside edge of that. And I'm just gonna keep adding that all over my tree. I think I'm gonna have the top of my tree be a little bit brighter, a little more on the yellow side than the lower part. So I don't think, right now anyway, I'm not gonna take much of this orange too far down. We'll keep it about from the lower middle up. And don't be too specific or worried about mixing up the same color every time. If your orange is a little bit different every time you go back, that's okay. If this is a real tree, there's probably gonna be a bit of variation in the colors anyway. One thing you wanna keep an eye on is your brush. If you start picking up too much of that dark underpainting color, just wipe it off because with the yellow in there, it's gonna start turning muddy, and we don't want mud. We wanna keep this tree nice and bright. Very, very vibrant. Let's see, even leave some of those little shapes kinda of out there on their own. They don't have to be attached to anything. I'm so excited for fall. It's actually starting to feel like fall here now. We've had a really hot, dry summer. And then all of a sudden we start getting 60 degree temperatures. So I'm not complaining about that at all. All right, almost done with this orange. Notice I let some of it out here in the purple. 
just kind of off on its own. So you can do that as well. And no, we haven't painted the sky yet, so we're not gonna have a dark purple sky. And don't let that stress you out if you're wondering how you're gonna paint around this tree. We're painting super loose and impressionistic, so it's okay. Some of that underpainting is gonna show. Some little parts of your tree might be covered up, and none of that matters. Now I'm just gonna take my brush and just wipe it on my paper towel again. And I'm gonna come in and just pick up a pinpoint of yellow on the tip of my brush. And wherever I want it to be the brightest, I'm just gonna kinda very gently dash it in there. I would avoid putting the yellow all over your tree too much. I mean, you can if you want to, but I think that it, this bright, bright color, especially with that super dark underpainting like right there, I think it's much more expressive when it's applied a little more subtly rather than in big brush strokes all over the entire tree. But you can certainly do it however you want. And at this point, don't worry about if you get too much. If you have a spot where, let's say right here, I went like that and I just hate that. It's too much yellow, it's the wrong shape, whatever. Don't sweat that. We're gonna take care of it very, very easily in just a few minutes. Let's get a little bit out here by the sky because that's gonna make a nice contrast to the color we put in the sky. And again, just make sure you're using light pressure here. If you apply too much pressure, especially in some of these heavily thick areas, you're gonna dig down through those layers and you're gonna start picking up other colors, particularly that dark, dark underpainting. And then your yellow is gonna get muddy unless you're almost obsessively wiping it off. I'm gonna go just a little heavier on the yellow up through this part of the tree. I'm picking up slightly larger scoop of yellow. See, I've, I've even got like a little point on the end of my brush. That's kind of what you're looking for and let that paint touch. Don't really put the brush down onto your canvas, just the paint. Just touch the paint to the canvas. I might take just a hint of some yellow or orange down into here. In some very small spots, not all across. I think that's good. Okay, so where I showed you where I have that little mark that I don't like and any transition areas you don't like, just wipe off your brush, come back to your red and do the same thing. Pick up a little point of that red and then very lightly just tap over the spot that you didn't like. That's all you have to do. I'm gonna go through in just a couple of spots especially where I feel like there's not a strong enough transition between the colors. Like if the yellow looks like it's coming right out of the dark, I might just kind of tap a little red over top of it. And I feel like I kind of have a dark spot going on right over here. Just put a little more red in there. Hint of our orange. That's better and a little point of yellow. No, I don't have that weird dark spot. And this may look kind of strange right now, but I encourage you not to mess with your tree too much more until after we get the sky in. Once we add the sky, it's really gonna change the way you see your tree, I promise. You know what I forgot to do? Just going back to my number eight filbert, a little bit of red, forgot to add some little leaf bits here. I'm doing this really in the same way that I applied the yellow with very little pressure and just kind of letting the paint touch. 
but I'm just kind of going in a side-to-side -side motion. When you apply it horizontally like that, then it looks flat. And so that's why I'm doing that. If I did any brush, stro brush strokes that were going up and down, it would change the perspective of, of it a little bit. I'm not trying to cover all of that dark, not even keeping the red necessarily just on the dark. And if you want to come in and grab a little bit of yellow, maybe mix up an orangish yellow, and do a similar thing, you can do that as well. Oh, I like that. I'm glad I did that. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry while I work on this one. So I'll record myself doing this one and then just put it in super fast time lapse and then when I'm done, I'll come back and tell you if I noticed any differences between the two so far. Okay, so there's my two canvases. And at first when I was doing canvas B, I thought that maybe the red was a little bit stronger than the red from canvas A. Because as you can see, my underpainting on the tree on this canvas is much lighter than the underpainting on this one. But I'm pretty sure it's just that I mixed a higher concentration of red in there because thalo blue is such a strong color that if it could overpower the thalo blue, it would easily overpower the yellow. And I didn't feel like the red was overpowering the yellow any more than it was on this canvas. And remember, this is our canvas A and this is B. So I'm gonna set B aside to dry and we'll continue working on A. Let's start painting in our ground. And for the ground, I'm also gonna use the thalo blue as well as the yellow. So I'm gonna take just a hint of phthalo blue and mix it into what's left of my yellow here. I'm gonna use varying shades of the green. Some of it is gonna be quite a bit bluer, some is gonna be more yellow, and a good amount of matte medium. Still using my filbert, and I'm just gonna run the edge of it right across where I want my hillside to be bring it into my trunk and down the side of it a little. Let's pick up a little bit of a different color. I picked up more yellow there. And when you get around your leaves here, don't be really obsessive with it. Just generally cut around them. If you cover up some of it, that's okay. If your purple underpainting shows, that's okay too. Just kind of get in there as well as you can. that little bit of purple showing. It's a nice contrast to the really warm and orange in there. You can even let your grass overlap parts of these little leaves that you put. Maybe this is long grass and those leaves are kind of, you know, being covered by parts of it. I'm gonna bring that up into my trunk just a little bit to indicate that maybe the grasses are long and growing up. Over on this side, I think I wanna make it look like there's a shadow. So I'm gonna mix up quite a darker green just by adding a little more of the phthalo blue. And I guess I didn't end up using any white, that's okay. Bring it up that side of the hill. But I'm gonna scrub it in just a little bit so there's not like a dramatic line where it's, this is dark and this is light. A 
We'll keep little hints of that yellow in there and that green. Let's get just a little bit of blue. I didn't clean off my brush, but I just picked up a little blue on its own. And wherever I feel like the tree would be casting a shadow, it's kind of where I'm just applying this blue in there. And since that green is still wet, it's kind of blending in with it a little bit. Let's get just a little bit down here at the base of the tree. Maybe we'll go just a little brighter on the hill back here. So there's a nice difference between the shadow and the hill in the back. That right up to the horizon line. I think I'm gonna brighten it up on this side too. So whichever yellow this is, the opacity is just as strong as the cadmium yellow light that I've been using. So if this is the cadmium free paint, then I would say it's pretty darn close to the cadmium paint. If you've ever used cadmium hue yellow paint, you know how transparent that is. So transparent, you can't cover anything with that but the cadmium base paint is quite a bit more opaque. All right, while that one dries, I will work on B. And my colors may look a little different just because, I mean, as you could tell by the two paintings that I did, every time you paint something, it's gonna look different. So when you guys get frustrated saying, my painting doesn't look like yours, then I want you to keep in mind that I'm doing these two paintings back to back and they don't look exactly the same. So your painting is going to look different than mine. And if you do it two or three times, it's gonna look different every single time and that's okay. Don't get frustrated by that. All right, see you on the other side of the time lapse. Okay, here we have A and B, and if I were to guess right this minute, I kind of feel like B is the cadmium paint and that A is the cadmium free. The yellow particularly seems to be more vibrant to me, but it could just be the way that I mix the two paints together. So yeah, I, I got a little impatient on this one and I worked the ground a little bit quicker and looser than I did on this one, so I ended up covering up a little bit more. So this one's gonna be the much nicer painting because I'm putting a little bit more attention into it than in this one. All right, so back to A and we're gonna fill in the sky and we are almost done. So I'm gonna stick with my, my filbert, but you can use any brush that you like to do skies with. I'm gonna grab a hint of this green. Not a ton of it. See, my brush is pretty dry. There's not a ton of paint on here. And I'm gonna go into my phthalo blue, which also has a little bit of green around the outside of it. I'm looking for kind of an aqua blue because I think that's gonna be a really gorgeous contrast against the bright orange and yellow of the tree. So I've got my blue. Let's test it out with some white and see if that's what I'm looking for. I think I want just a hint more green just a tiny speck of yellow. There we go, let's start with that, and see how that goes. Okay, so we're gonna come in here to wherever we see purple, and wherever it is that we see that purple, we're gonna come in and just start touching this color into there. So even in your tree, but I mean, if there's a spot you don't wanna put the blue in, then don't. But do a little bit of it in your tree to indicate that there's some breaks through the leaves and you can see the sky through there. Don't worry about going over top of any of the red or the yellow. So obviously you wanna make sure that your tree is dry before you do this part because you don't wanna start scattering that red into the blue. That's the part I'm doing first is just here inside of the tree. and then we can work outside of the tree. So I have my bluish aqua color, and I'm gonna pick up a tiny speck of white, 
a little bit of matte medium. Start working that out here. So even where I've got these little tiny bits, I'm just gonna generally carve around it. If I accidentally cover it up, oh well, it's gone. And if that purple shows around it, that's okay too. So don't let this part drive you crazy. I know if you don't typically paint like this, the temptation is gonna be there to be really tidy and get in as close as you can. But I encourage you to just not. Let that underpainting show accidentally cover up some of your leaves. If there's a leaf you don't like, just cover it up intentionally. And see, so you can even see some of that underpainting in my sky. I'm not fully covering it there either. Now, as I start working down lower, I'm gonna pick up more white. I want my sky to be lighter toward the bottom. I'm not worrying about my brush strokes while I'm cutting around the tree, but then once I'm done with that, I'll go back and kind of smooth them out because I don't really want to see the, the mark of the filbert like that. So super light pressure to just dust that away. And picked up a good amount of white. I want my horizon here to just have a hint of blue. I'm not getting all the way up to my tree or my grass. You can still see some of that underpainting there. A little bit of matte medium because I was getting a little more of the texture of the canvas than I wanted. Careful not to paint over your trunk. just a few clouds in a minute. Very, very simple clouds. See, I'm working quickly, and I'm not working quickly because I have to do two of these. I'm working quickly because that forces me to just get this on there and not micromanage details. I don't want to micromanage details. A little more white at the base here. and then just soften out those brush stroke lines. Now it almost looks like there's a cloud back there. Let's kind of add a hint of a cloud in here. I just picked up some white. I'm just kind of squidging it in there. Just kind of little random shapes. I like that sky a lot. I think I'm gonna add just one more little puff of a cloud right in there. I'm gonna take that into my tree a little bit too, say so that that's gonna help the tree seem really transparent if it's not all the same color through these little windows that we're creating. Let's just soften that line. And we are almost done with this painting. I'm gonna go to my bright pick up some of this white, as much of the clean white as I can. A little matte medium. And I'm gonna use the hard edge of the bright to my advantage. I come in here and I am still cutting around my leaves, but all of my brush strokes, they're kind of in a little bit of an arc. I'm not gonna draw a hard line down here. It's not a perfectly straight across rectangle line, it kind of swoops down and back up just a little bit. That's going to help give the illusion that our tree is rounded. And again, notice I did not cover all of that underpainting. Now that's either a little shadow or some of those darker areas in birch trees. I'm going to put out the teeniest, tiniest bit of black. I don't need much, just an itty bitty bit. And then I'm going to Grab a little point on the end of my brush and super light pressure, just in a couple of places. Put in some little black lines. And this little window here is kind of in line with my trunk. So I just added some of that white in there to say that we can see part of the trunk right there. And I think this little painting is done. Now here's the real test for the opacity of these yellow paints. I'm gonna sign with the yellow. 
make sure that you can see my signature with the cadmium hue paints you can't really sign with yellow on a color this dark but with the cadmium base paints it's not been a problem all right let's do our sky here And there are two paintings side by side. So while I was painting them, which one did you think was the cadmium paint and which one did you think was the cadmium free paint? Leave me a comment below and let me know if you ended up being right. I hope that you enjoyed this painting and I hope that it helps get you in the mood for autumn. All right, let's open the envelope and see which paint was which. So A is the cadmium free paint. So that means that our first painting was done with the cadmium free paints. And the B paints were the cadmium paints. So that's this little painting here. Now remember when I had painted the grass in this one, I said that I thought that this one might be the cadmium paints because the yellow seemed a little bit more vibrant. So that was either just a lucky guess on my part or maybe there's just the tiniest, tiniest vibrancy difference with the yellow. But either way, aside from the fact that I mixed the colors a little bit different, applied them a little bit differently, I don't see a huge difference in the colors of either of my paintings. And looking at these two little paintings side by side now, I don't see a vibrancy difference between the yellow in A and the yellow in B that I thought I saw when I was applying it. So thank you again to Liquitex for generously sending me those paints. I've been using the cadmium paints for a while now and I was curious about the cadmium free paint and just hadn't gotten around to testing them out. So I was super excited about it when I was given this opportunity. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you can paint with me every week. And then check out the video description below for a link to my website or just go to paintingwithjane.com. Thank you as always for painting with me everyone and I'll see you next time.